In order for informed consent to be complete, three criteria must be met. Those three criteria include, number one, patient absolutely must be clear about the risks of the management as well as the risks of not doing the treatment. So make sure the patient is aware of the risks associated with either doing a procedure, taking medications, as well as the risks associated with not doing a procedure, taking medications, etc. Number two, patients must be aware of the benefits of the treatment. And number three, patient must be given all pertinent alternatives to the particular treatment. So those are the three criteria that must be met in order to meet the criteria for informed consent. Now, there's situations where we don't need parental consent. This includes when a young patient has a drug or alcohol addiction, if a, if a young patient is pregnant. Now, this also includes if a young patient wants birth control. If a patient who is underage has an STD, no parental consent is required to treat it, nor is there any um, law that makes us disclose this to the patient. Now these laws, while not in every single state, are valid in the majority of states. Now there are some exceptions to informed consent. So what are some of these exceptions? Well, the first one is if the patient lacks the capacity to make a decision. So legally they're not competent. The second one is if the situation is an emergency. Sometimes a situation is an emergency and waiting for informed consent can lead to death. So it can be dangerous. That is one of the exceptions. Another situation or another exception to informed consent is if the patient waives their right to informed consent. Sometimes patients just do not want to know. And if that's the case, then we make sure we make a note of it, and then we move forward. Now, there's something known as a case of therapeutic privilege. And what this means is that sometimes we will withhold information that if we were to give it to our patient could severely hurt them. So the case of therapeutic privilege means to withhold information that would otherwise severely harm the patient. Now, what constitutes decision-making capacity? There's a few important criteria that we have to meet in order to say our patient meets this capacity. The first one is, is the patient correctly informed? All patients have the right to be informed about pros and cons. Now, 
some patients won't understand what pros or cons means. Uh, if you give them the pros and you give them the cons and they can't seem to comprehend what you're saying, that would mean that maybe they don't meet the criteria for decision-making capacity. Another important uh, criteria for decision-making capacity is whether the decision remains stable over time. Any patient who changes their decision over and over and over may not be in the right mind to make an informed decision. Therefore, if they change frequently, this can be a bad sign. Okay. Now, once patients are informed, can they, can they correctly communicate their choice to you? Any patient who, has, who is in the right mind for decision-making capacity should be easily able to communicate to you their decision without any confusion. Move forward. Is the decision made by your patient consistent with their values and goals? So you should know your patient, how they live their life. Are they religious? Uh, are they a Jehovah's Witness? Um, do they have certain beliefs, etc.? The decisions they make should be consistent with all of those um, characteristics. And if they're very, very different, that can make you kind of think that something might not be right. And we have to dive a little bit further into that. The last criterion for decision-making capacity is um, is a decision made without the presence of delusions or illusions? So, if you detect that there's a presence of delusions or any type of hallucinations, uh, this indicates that the patient is not 100% sound of mind. If someone is not 100% of sound mind, legally, they're not competent to make a decision. Okay, so make sure you understand the steps that we need to take in order to determine if someone is of decision-making capacity.